did the year go. Um, so again, good morning to all of our MOED family. Um, today's learning session is brought to you by your MOED HR department. Um, so everyone say good morning to my wonderful team on the line. We have Brandon, today, and Rhonda. So we want to we want to kick it off in the and all in the spirit of serving you. Um, it's our job. Um, you are all, all of our customers. Um, so serving the employees who serve the city is what we do in our department. And so there has been some tremendous and exciting changes within the HR department over the last year. Uh, all new faces um, on on the team. People still tell me that I'm still fairly new being here for 3 years. And so, um, over the last few months through various employee engagement events and, um, various HR transactions, you've interacted, um, with 1 or everyone on the team. Um, but so visually on the screen, everyone, um, should. Uh, see the, the presentation and our organizational department um, structure and so. I'm led by myself, um, and I have two HR journals too today, and Brandon. And yes, I see some comments coming in the chat. Ironically, if they are both Sagittarius, it is Sagittarius season. Um, Brandon and uh, Brandon's birthday is coming up, and Shade just had a birthday. Um, so you know, any other Sagittarius can you know shout themselves out in the chat while we are um, just talking a little bit about all things HR. Rhonda Johnson, also an HR assistant um, with the team. Um, following up on the last learn session, we heard a lot about ARPA, and we since then, you know, we we had a press release um, and received approval. So coming soon will be two new additional um, HR positions, um, along with other positions that we're going to have within our agency to support. What we are doing to support job seekers and employers in the spirit of workforce development. So we will have new two new positions, a, a HR journalist one and a recruiter to join our team. Hopefully in January, we're going to start that recruitment this week. Um, so wanted to share that with you um, so that you or your professional network can apply once those things are posted if you're qualified. So, um, I believe it was in May that we introduced the department's mission statement. We thought that is that it was important to to really establish that as we are rebranding the department as well as enhancing the services that we have for all of you, our customers. And so, as a refresher or new for those who have joined us um, since then, is our mission statement. Um, this is something that we created as a team. So words. Um, from each and every one of our HR spirits came um, to this presentation to form this mission statement. We are committed to contributing to MOD's mission by passionately delivering human resource services to the city's workforce development professionals, that is you. We are motivated and determined to assist staff and are empathetic to challenges faced by our employees as they deliver on our mission to be a workforce system that works. Um, that is our commitment to you. We share it publicly in this learn session. We ask for your support, your help, and in, in, in holding us accountable to that. We're always open to feedback. Also in the spirit of customer service, um, especially with us managing the hybrid work environment. We have all have Google numbers or a mobile number for that's designated for work um, for days when we're not physically in the office. So on here and this presentation will be shared so that you have it at your fingertips is each one of our email addresses and our work provided mobile number um, for you to contact your designated um, you know, HR person for whatever services you are in need of. Um, we have, was there a question? Okay. So wanted to make sure we provided that to you all. We are um, 8.30 to 4.30 and all of us um, are in the office on, um, at 4.17 on Mondays and Thursdays. 
um, and as needed at other sites. Um, so wanted to make sure all of you had knew that as well. Wanted to also this all in the spirit of how may we help you um, give you an understanding at a very high level on the roles and responsibilities of the team so that you can, you know, get the information you need uh, most uh, uh, efficiently. And so in, in my role, I am responsible for planning, leading, and directing everything across the entire division. And um, as along with the, the senior leadership team to, to ensure that the HR team is going beyond transactional is being very transformational in the work and services that we deliver. And it's really truly connected to all things workforce. Um, and then the two generalists, two level uh, positions, Shade and Brandon, they are responsible for performing and leading the daily functions across all of the functional areas of a, um, HR. Um, and so that to kind of put it in, you know, specific items for you. That's all things, you know, the recruitment. We have a lot of recruitment right now um, with all of the exciting things happening in, in the spirit of employment in the Baltimore. Um, but we also, everything that is within Workday, um, partnering with payroll, central payroll to make sure employees are paid correctly once you input in your information into the system and all things about fostering positive employee relations and managing leave um, are some of the high ticket items that they're responsible for. And the way that I've structured the team is that we actually are divided, uh, well, specifically Shade and Brandon, in terms of their designated client group or customer service group. And all of us support everyone, but so that we can, especially with the way Workday is set up by supervisory orgs, we ha I have them supporting for an entire fiscal year particular supervisory departments. And so those managers and leaders have um, gotten acclimated with them in that capacity. Um, if you ever have a question about it, you can reference this document, you can ask your supervisor, or you can just simply email us. Um, the, the thought is so that one, for their professional development, they are going beyond just a transactional check in the box, check in the you know, off a list of things to do, but they truly understand the programmatic aspects of what that entire department is doing so that they can provide, uh, you know, the, the depth and breadth of experience um, for full, full life cycle HR support for that department. And um, they, they seem to enjoy that and we like that model. And so we are going to continue um, to perfect it. It allows them to also, you know, get ready for whatever the next level is for them, for them in their career as well. Then also new to the team is Mrs. Rhonda. She is supporting us administratively across the entire department um, with special focus on ARPA and youth work programs. Um, so she um, is responsible for a lot of the tracking and, and follow up and behind the scenes things that are happening um, with all things MOED employees. Um, so wanted to give you guys that uh, brief overview as well. Okay. So let's get into our service level commitment to you. Um, we are putting it in black and white. Um, we're sharing it with you. Um, we want to uh, make sure that we, as one of the many support functions in the agency um, in our central office, we wanna make sure that we're doing everything possible to service you and we're um, turning and partnering where we need to outside of our agency. And so in that spirit, our commitment to you is to turn the two business days of a request. And we are asking that you email the team um, share mailbox at MODHR at OEDWorks.com and copy your designated HR generalist. Okay, so for example, who do I see on my screen? I see Curtis face in the box. So I'll just use him as an example. So Curtis is on the youth works. Um, he's in within youth services. He sits at 24 streets main location, um, reporting to the dynamic program that we're using this regime. So his designated um, HR generalist is Shaden. 
So if he needs something, he he knows this. He's he's been full time since September. He's rocking and rolling. He sends an email to the box, and he always includes your day. Um, it's a way for us to make sure why, um, the the intention is so that if anyone is out of this, like you guys are human, we could be out of the office unexpectedly. Every, many of you know that I had a crazy bubble ball accident in May, and I was out of the office. No one planned. I wasn't a planned surgery, but I was out, and so. If things are going there, it's our intent so that we can make sure that we're all that we're all covered and we can help and support each other um, in doing so um, if someone is is out. Okay. Excuse so, me, Maisha. Yes. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, how are you? I'm great and grateful. How are you? Good, great. Um, my question is, did you say that you all are only in the office on Mondays and Thursdays? We're physically on site at our central office on Monday okay. and Thursdays currently. So what does that mean? Let's say if I need to contact someone in the HR on, it could be, let's say a Tuesday, Wednesday or Friday. Can you still be contacted? Yeah, we can be contacted via email or our phone numbers oh, any okay. day, Monday, well, any work day, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30. Okay. Um, we're physically on site on those days. That is um, the Benton building at this current moment isn't fully open to all city agencies um, based off of the city's reopening plan. So we're physically on site those days. Okay. But I, yeah, I just needed to know in case, you know, I needed to contact you on one of those you other can contact days. Us at any time between Monday through Friday, 830 to 430, unless it's a city observed holiday. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, and we'll have that information in black and white also on the last slide of this presentation. We also want to give some, you know, some tips so that we can better service you. If you could just include as much detail as possible in your request, um, that would be very, very much appreciated. Sometimes we, you know, we get emails that says, can you please call me? Um, and we want to make sure that if there is some pre work that we need to do, we are and or and or, and or we're prior prioritizing items that we have as much information as possible as we um, are servicing and, and, and managing in multiple different things at a time. Um, so, for example, if it's payroll, you know, you know, why was my pay short? Did you take a look at your time sheet and then leave in there? We're, we're going to go through some examples just so you can get some visuals. Um, on that in just a second, but much as much detail as possible will be very much appreciated. We, we want to also share that, um, you, you, so that you all know that we partner, we are like that 1 stop shop for you. And there are certain instances that we have to partner with other city agencies. Um, so we don't always have all of the answers or we're not the, the, um, the, the sole um, decision maker on certain items. And so in order to do that, we, um, are happy to facilitate and be the liaison. Um, and that is our role as agency HR practitioners within the city. Um, we, we want to make sure that. You know that sometimes we have to reach out to our partners at Department of Human Resources who supports all 13,000 city employees. We have to reach out to the Office of Labor Commissioner. You saw last week once the, the Labor Commissioner sent out communication about the you know early dismissal. We partner with getting direction from them on those type of items as an example. We partner with the Baltimore City Office of Information Technology. Um, we partner with them directly on credentials and security access um, for your workday um, credentials and password resets and things of that nature. And finally, um, many people may not know this, but payroll is handled by the, the city's Department of Finance. And so we are regularly interacting with all of these different agencies. Um, sometimes several times a day um, for various projects or ad hoc requests. And so um, we do our best that can facilitate in, a, in an expeditious, you know, timely manner. Um, but we have to, we want to make sure that you are aware of that um, in our service view. Okay. Continuing on as it relates to our service level commitment to all of you. Um, as we have in the past, we, we host different employee meetings 
since in the last 18 months or so, obviously many of that has been happening via WebEx. On in some instances, um, you've seen us recently, Brandon and I was at Eastside, I was at Northwest a couple of weeks ago. We've gone to WRC, West IO. We've been to all of the open locations that we have um, as needed. Of course, still practicing all of the, the city's COVID protocols. Um, but whether it be focus group roundtables that we we had um, by union group or by division, we've done it. Whether there are different trainings on new and updated policies and protocols, like we did not too long ago with the vaccination protocols, we've also just hosted office hours for people just to pop in. We've done that recently with open enrollment. We do it with with, with workday, um, and all of this is because of you. This is because of your feedback. We're we're. Just like you had to reimagine how to service your your customers, we're doing the same thing. We hear from you all. We value hearing from you, and so we continue to add to that, and we will continue to do that based off of the feedback that we've received um, and that we continue to receive. So keep you know keep it coming, and um, as long as we have bandwidth, we'll manage and we prioritize to make sure we do things such as that to support all of you. Okay. If we can go on mute, unless you have a question, someone have a question. Um, one of the things we want to know also is if you have time sensitive HR concerns, we ask that you, you know, pick up the phone and call. Um, and, a, in a, we, we are managing multiple, um, tasks and priorities throughout the day and, um. We want to make sure we answer you in a you know timely manner if it's something that requires you know immediate action. So some of those things that come top of mind for us is obviously if it's pay impacting, um, you send an email, but that's a call as well. Like if you want to send an email, you can, but like I think it's important that you pick up the phone and call so that we can work on it more expeditiously. Like this Friday is a payday. Um, you should be able to see your paycheck start tomorrow. So. Um, as we are in our email for certain items, also in different meetings, we're doing interviews, we're working on developing project, um, different presentations. Sometimes that phone call can, you know, in terms of what we need to do, can help us to get to you faster. If we can mute, that would be great. Appreciation. Um, if it's injury or illness related, you know, we, we've had that as well. So, you know, pick, Hey, send an email, but Hey, this is, we actually have a, a you know, a real situation. I was driving the van. I had a, you know, had a car accident. You know, I want to make sure I do the, the, the appropriate protocol. That's a, you know, an example of a phone call. Obviously everything with, um, COVID-19, um, an email and a call is, is definitely, you know, helpful as so that we can get to you. In an expeditious way, and again, that call should be to your designated HR journalist to um, to, to assist you. And then for un unresolved and complex matters are are sent to me. There, my team is equipped. If they need anything, they'll you know they can they will connect with me. Um, so on the unresolved matters or you know complex matters, um, that are occurring can be escalated to me directly. Um, other than that, you are in great hands um, with my mighty current team of three. Um, so we wanted to make sure some of these things can help you that you've talked through the last two slides will show you the best way for us so that we can better serve you. So I'm going to turn it over to Brandon and talk a little bit uh, about some of our trends in the HR inquiries. These are some of the you know, hot topics or things that come through our phone or email our office. And we want to just talk through some things to keep in mind um, as you are reaching out. All right. Thank you, Maisha. So as you all know, recruitment is a huge function of ours. Um, and just to give you a quick overview, we, we kind of go through an internal process from posting the position um, to vetting through candidates. So we work a lot with our fiscal team just to make sure that um, the position is coming from the correct fund. We also work with our hiring managers to review resumes, um, set up interviews, just to make sure that we are uh, making that commitment to getting the right talent in our agency. Um, we also work with city partners as well as we go through the hiring process, just to make sure that 
Um, we get the background checks and everything cleared from my employees coming in the building. So I know you all are very equipped and you're always out on the front lines, making sure that our residents, um, um, you know, reach their fullest potential. But we also want to make sure that you keep in mind that, you know, we want you to reach your fullest potential as well as a MOED employee. So we are always hiring, as Maisha said, um, and if you see anything online, we just want you to make sure that um, you review the job post and make sure that you meet the qualifications. For example, if you are you know, a CDF or, or something of that nature and you want to move up in the organization and you want to become a supervisor, just make sure that you're taking those steps to make sure that you meet those qualifications. Make sure that your, uh, your resume is updated. I know we spend a lot of time making sure our customers up resumes are updated, but you want to make sure that you're keeping yourself marketable as well. So make sure that your resume is updated. If you plan on growing your career here in our agency, you also want to make sure that you have a conversation with your supervisor uh, regarding the internal opportunity that you um, are looking to apply for. I think it's very important that you keep an open dialogue with, with your supervisor. They may have some type of feedback um, that may be helpful in you growing your career. So as we tell our customers to prepare for interviews and screenings, you want to make sure that you're being mindful of your interview and, and screening as well. So making sure that you follow the steps to make sure that your, your interviews and everything are being completed. So we do have a, a two-step process. Um, you can either be phone screened or you can complete a, a video interview. All right. So I know a few of us have gone through the um, the interview process via WebEx. So you want to make sure that you have questions for your interviewers. So I know it, you know your intern, but you want to make sure that you, you you treat this interview as if you are just walking through the door. Have questions, have follow up questions because you are looking to to transition into a new role. And also, if you're not if you're not selected. Um, don't let it stop you. We also we always encourage you to look for other roles as well within the agency. So always be open to feedback. Maybe that position may not be a good fit, but hey, maybe another position may be a better fit for you within the agency. So always be open to feedback because at the end of the day, we're all just trying to make sure that we make sure we all work to our fullest potential. So leave requ leave requests is also a huge HR function. So you want to make sure, I know we get a lot of requests for FML and ADA, but you want to make sure you're submitting those requests through Workday. Um, and just a quick thumbs up, everybody knows what Workday is, correct? I hope you do. <laughs> All right, great. So everybody knows what Workday is. So payroll, which is the most important part of you know, our function. Um, just be mindful, timesheets should be Submitted and approved by the end of the week on a Friday, on a Friday, as we do not receive a paycheck. Please keep in mind that a lot of what we do inside the agency, a lot of it is done, is not done in-house. So if your, your time sheet is submitted and approved on a Monday of a pay week, you're subject to increased risk and in, in pay delays. So if you do, if you do run into that issue, we have to reach out to one of our city partners in our payroll department to get that issue resolved. It's not something that we can kind of handle in-house. So just be mindful of that. So <clears throat> the magic numbers you should be looking for, um, 36.7 weekly uh, and 73.4 hours bi-weekly. So especially for supervisors, if you're seeing those numbers, those numbers are kind of your an indicator that um, time is being submitted correctly. Of course, you can make sure that you comb through it but you want to make sure if you see those numbers, then you're on the right track. But again, um, you just want to be mindful that you submit your time on time or you run the risk of um, not getting paid on time. All right. So I'm going to pass it over to Shade to kind of go into more detail about time entry. All right. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, so the next few slides, I'm going to just, you know, briefly discuss some things that you can look within your timesheet to see if there's anything um, that's a little funky with it. And that way, uh, before you get your paycheck and you realize, oh, there's a, there's, you know, a decrease in my paycheck, we can be more mindful of what to look for in our timesheet and be able to avoid those issues. So I have a couple of examples that we typically get when someone notices that their pay was short. The first one is 
Um, a lot of times when I get an email from someone saying that their pay is short, I take a look at their timesheet. Um, and one of the main things is um, if you look at this timesheet over here, uh, oh, go back, sorry. If you look at this timesheet here, um, there was someone that requested that they were they used paid leave and they didn't get paid that leave. So as you can see, I have it highlighted in the circle to show that that area is blank. So they might have submitted the leave, but may not have been approved or may not have been completed. So a lot of times, if you look at your timesheet and you notice that it's blank, it means that there's no nothing, there's no calculated hours that you worked, or there's no record that you requested leave on that day. Um, if you look a little bit to your my right, you can see that there's like holiday leave. Whenever you have leave and it's approved, that's what it looks like. So as you can see on the bars to either side, like those long bars show like your hours that you were in the office and you worked. And then these shorter bars, um, these shorter bars, you can, uh, Gerald, you can increase the size of the screen on the left. There's a magnifying glass and you can click zoom in. It's a plus sign. But the um the bars you can just look at and see that one is leave and the other one is you know your hours worked and then if we go on to the other slide so as you can see on this example here the last two days on that timesheet I haven't highlighted it shows that those two days are approved and they're green so you want to make sure that your timesheets are green for every day that you worked, whether with leave that you use or actual hours that you worked. If it's not green, if it's gray, or if it's just blank, that's an indicator that your pay is going to be short unless it's corrected. And when you notice that your pay is short, you can either um, enter your hours yourself and then submit it over to your manager, or if that time has lapsed and it's passed and you can't touch your timesheet anymore, you can inform your manager. And if it needs to be escalated to us, it can. And then we can resolve it. And then here's another example that we get sometimes, especially for employees that are hourly. Um, the workday timesheet could be a little sensitive if you come into work a little earlier or later than what the timesheet has you scheduled for. So, like, let's say I was scheduled to come into work at 830 and I came in at like 850. The timesheet likes to hold that <clears throat> even though you clocked in, it likes sometimes it likes to hold that information because it sees that it's not matching. So there are times where you might have clocked in and clocked out, or at least, you know, you, you make the, the action to do that, but the timesheet isn't recognizing it. So I just ask that when you submit your timesheets on that Friday before we get paid, that you take a look at your own timesheet, which we all have access to in Workday, to ensure that all of your days that you came into work are showing. Um, and then if you go on to the next slide, this is what a timesheet looks like, and you want it to look like this. You want it to be green everywhere, because that shows that your manager approved it, and then over at our HR department, we approved it as well. So most of the time, um, if it's green like this, you're good to go, and your paycheck will be as expected. Okay, and then with that said, on time, so of course, things happen. Sometimes you do everything right, and for whatever reason, Workday miscalculates it. So we do have paycheck issues that we have to escalate over to payroll. And there are three um, scenarios with this. So first, we can request an on-demand or off-cycle check, which is usually the checks that you'll be able to pick up. Payroll prints checks, regardless of situation, every Wednesday and Friday. So for on-demand checks, um, you have to be short three days worth of pay or more, um, or usually there's a workday miscalculation. So if it's something where it wasn't a human error, it was something with workday, they'll make an exception and get that um, that check printed out sooner. Um, and then there are times, so even though it has to be three days short or less, there are times that we can make an exception request, but again, that's not always guaranteed. So we do it off of a case-by-case -case basis. The other scenario is an on-cycle check request. So with this, your paycheck is short within one to two days of pay, so less than three, and the payments will be retroed and processed as an additional paycheck to your next scheduled pay date. So let's say, Something was wrong with your last paycheck that we all got. Um, when was the last time we got paid? On the 19th. Then, wait. Yeah, on the 19th. <laughs> and then your next paycheck will be a little bigger on the 3rd. And then lastly, there's a stop payment. So for this, these are for employees that get their check mailed. Unfortunately, we have to wait four business days before we can make a request over to um, Central Payroll because they want to ensure that the check was you know, it's mailed and they, they try to avoid situations where they do a stop payment 
Because once they do a stop payment and you get your check in the mail, but you don't have the new one yet, you, you can't use that old check anymore. So they try to make sure that they wait out for the post office. Um, but at that time, we request a stop payment usually the Thursday after you say that you don't have a check. And then central payroll connects with the bank to ensure that your check wasn't cashed out. And then after they do that, they print a new check again, usually on the Wednesday or the Friday. So those are the three scenarios. And as you can see, it's pretty, it's lengthy. And, you know, when you have a pay delay, you want to make sure you get paid as soon as possible, which is why we try to be more uh, proactive and determining when our pay, our time sheets look a little off so we can correct it by the time we get paid and not have to, you know, deal with waiting for the extra money to come back. And now I'll steer it back to Maisha. <laughs> Thank you, Shade. Um, so we're, we're coming to the end. Um, so thank you for your patience and then we're going to couple minutes over, um, but we put in here some links and to, to some, some resources that we, that we reference and, um, when we receive inquiries, we, um, direct employees to certain policies and resources, um, from our different partners. So the administrative manual is, uh, a, a stop, stop, a one stop source for all the city policies. Um, you can find HR and finance related policies there. Um, it's uh, managed by the Department of Finance. Uh, also, all of the frequently asked questions as it relates to payroll. Uh, the link is there for that as well. There's a city of Baltimore internet if you're not familiar. Um, various information there for employees to reference. Um, obviously, the Department of Human Resources. So, most times, if we're referring you to there, it's for benefits related matters. Um, most of the time, um, those that's the time when we actually direct our employees to that division. There's a separate agency that handles retirement. So, um, you can reach out to them for specific information regarding your. Um, retirement or questions and things of that nature. We do not have direct access. Again, this is a situation where we're really just being a liaison and facilitating and making sure you have the resources. The Labor Commission's office is where all of the contract agreements are housed. Um, and um, you don't have to be on the city network to get to this, this website. This is where you can look at the CUB or the MAPS MOU, also known as the contract agreement. And then lastly, the workday resources on the workday website this is where you'll find all of the videos and job aids to perform certain actions as an as an added level of service we frequently share screen and walk employees through it as you heard brandon mentioned earlier um the leave request uh, currently employees still send us an email for that um, we want to start shifting um, to using the self-service tool and employees actually submitting their FMO requests via Workday, um, their job aids on this. And we're, we're also happy to share and actually walk individuals through that at any time for your request. And then finally, we appreciate your time today. Um, we thank you for allowing us to serve you. Um, and um, Marilyn, to your earlier question, our hours are here, 8.30 to 4.30, um, our department main line. So you now have five different numbers to reach us on um, and um, five different email accounts. So we thank you all. We'll, we'll stay on just in case there's any um, questions. We'll make sure we've responded to everything in the chat. Um, so that's all, folks. Thanks, everybody. Well, I, I just want to say uh, thank you to Maisha and Shade and Brandon and Rhonda. Um, you know, for everything you guys are doing, mm -hmm. but especially during COVID, uh, HR has had to play a lead role, and the policies are always changing because our circumstances are changing. And I just appreciate how you guys have led and adapted and, and gotten us through this. So thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys so much for everything. Appreciate it. Thank you guys. Maisha, just a quick question while I have you here. Um, will there be more polo shirts distributed? Um, the batch that went out are for those employees. So the short answer is yes, eventually. 
Um, the long answer is the ones that we have are those who submitted the survey in August. Um, so we. Diane, can I jump in? Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Diane, I did get your order. So there is a second um, batch that's coming. Okay. All right. Thank you. Because I did the survey, and there are several here in the building who did the survey and didn't receive theirs. So I thank you. That that's what they were wondering. Yes. So I have the second survey. I think it was only fifteen people that submitted on there. So I do have that order coming. Okay. Thank you. Are people excited about their polos, Diane? Is that the sense that I'm they, getting? They're very excited. Look, I, I, I was hoping to have mines for tomorrow because weather permitting, we're going to do another outside event. Oh, okay. So I'll just borrow one of the other ones in my same size since some new ones are coming. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Everybody who's left, everyone have a great rest of the week. I'll talk to Thank you soon. You. you too, Diane. Um, did Darrell get his answer question answered? I I kept uh sending him messages. He didn't. I kept sending a message back and forth. I even asked him what was the issue. Okay. What, when did he submit it? So I'll reach out to him. I'll reach out to him. All right. Um, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I'm sure what ticket. Oh. Brandon trying to get his birthday wishes. <laughs> <laughs> He's so full. <laughs> <laughs> My birthday's in two days. Somebody throw that in there. <laughs> <laughs>